Hey what is up guys it's Justin here and today I've got the full comparison for you between the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Google Nexus 5. As you may know the Nexus 5 did come out late 2013 however I will be sure to bring you another comparison when the next generation Nexus comes out later this year. And definitely think it's fair to say that the Samsung Galaxy S5 fits in as a top end flagship phone while the LG Nexus 5 although featuring a lot of the top end specs from 2013 when it was released does fit into the mid range of smartphones coming in at a mid range price of $350 off contract. The Samsung Galaxy S5 features a Snapdragon 801 processor clocked in at 2.5GHz and 2GB of RAM, and the Nexus 5 features a Snapdragon 800 processor clocked in at 2.3GHz and also 2GB of RAM. And that comes to show that both these devices are actually going to be very comparable in terms of performance. And in this video I'll be running through each and every major category that these two phones can be compared by in order to assist you in your buying decision. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start out with the comparison. So the first category we're going to look at is the hardware. As you know the Samsung Galaxy S5 has gone with the plastic construction once again with its removable perforated texture back, which is intended to give you a little bit more grip of your smartphone instead of that slimy and slippery back that we saw on the S4. On the Nexus 5 you've also got a plastic construction, however this is a nice smooth texture to the back and I felt that the phone was extremely seamless and very unison throughout the back and the edges. And despite the material of the Nexus 5, the phone itself definitely feels still very durable and solid all around. But nevertheless, both these phones do feel extremely good in the hand. When it comes to the thickness and weight, the S5 comes in at 145 grams and 8.1 millimeters thick, while the Nexus 5 comes in at 130 grams and 8.59 millimeters in thickness. On the bottom of the Nexus 5, you've got a micro USB port and your speaker port, while on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you have the micro USB that is compatible with USB 3.0 as you can see. And the reason for the port cover is because this device is IP67 rated, which Samsung claims is dust and water resistant. However, if you do look into the details of the certification, this device is certified to go underwater at 1 meter for up to 30 minutes, no problem. And on the S5, you've got your speakers located on the back. And the button placement is pretty much the same on both these devices with the power button located on the right side and the volume rockers located on the left. You may also notice that on the S5 you have a physical home button, a touch capacitive back and recent apps button and on the Nexus 5 all of your buttons are on screen which do take up some space. On the S5 you also have a removable back and that will give you access to your battery as well as your micro SIM and SD card slots. And right below the camera, you also have a heart rate sensor on the S5, which is mainly used in conjunction with S Health. However, if you did see Mac Mixing's video, it is pretty much deemed a gimmick. But I guess for some people, it would still be useful. And on the front, you've also got a fingerprint scanner on the Samsung Galaxy S5, which can be used for unlocking your phone and also signing into certain accounts. Moving on to the display, the Samsung Galaxy S5 has a 5.1 inch 1920x1080 resolution 432 ppi full HD Super AMOLED display. And on the Nexus 5, you got a 4.95 inch 1920x1080 resolution 445 ppi IPS display. And in terms of the clarity of these displays, you pretty much won't notice any difference whatsoever between both of these devices. Text is crisp, and everything in general looks very clear on both of these displays. Where you will notice the difference, however, is the color representation between both of these displays. As you know, on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you do have a very nice, vibrant display, high contrast, high saturation, and the colors in general will all really just jump out to you. That being said, it isn't really the most accurate color representation, but instead, it really makes the colors very pleasant, and a lot of people do actually like that. On the Nexus 5, however, I would still say that the colors really do look good, and it would give you more of a natural color representation. That being said, I would say that it comes down to personal preference as to which display you really do enjoy more. But nevertheless, both of these phones definitely have some great displays on them. Now onto the software, although both these devices do run Android 4.4 KitKat, I'm pretty sure you will notice that there is a huge difference in terms of the experience when you compare these two devices. The S5 of course having Samsung's TouchWiz UI. And on the Nexus 5, you've got a stock Android experience, which I'm sure a lot of people may like, but it'd be very interesting to see if Google does team up with Samsung once again and release a Google Play edition of the phone, like we saw with the Samsung Galaxy S4. So first taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S5 here, you can see that the overall interface is very snappy and that's to be expected since it does have a Snapdragon 801 processor clocked in at 2.5GHz. 
So the first thing we're really going to look at is the My Magazine, which is to the left of your home screen and allows you to select different topics or social networks to display on your magazine. And it is also laid out in a very tidy form, which I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy. Moving on to the app drawer, pretty typical here, but on the right corner, you also have access to quite a bit of settings, hide, unhide apps, disable them, downloaded apps, have them sorted all the way you like. And you'll notice that on stock Android, everything is just so much more cleaner and simpler. While in TouchWiz, you have more of a, I'd say, feature-packed interface, giving you more customization options, though a lot of people do prefer a more simple and less sophisticated interface. And moving on to your notification dropdown, you will notice your quick toggle settings along the top, which can be changed, as well as your brightness slider. And compared to stock Android, where you have a separate window with your quick toggle settings, Samsung has placed it right when you slide down on your notification panel, which some people may like and others may prefer just a cleaner notification tab. When it comes to the settings tab, I would say that Samsung has really made it much more visually appealing. You can have an either grid or list view, but you have all your settings along there, the nice colorful icons, and I definitely think it is a change for the good as opposed to the way it looked before. Though it may take some getting used to in terms of finding your way around. Heading back to our home screen, you can hold on to your home button and that will take you to Google now from anywhere and by double tapping that you are able to use S Voice. And by holding on your back button, that will take you to your multitasking menu and that will allow you to have two different applications running on one screen. So here you can see I'm going to drag the music over to one half of the display and the video to the other half. So you can pretty much run two applications at once and also resize it very easily. This is a feature that I use a lot on the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and it definitely works very well on the S5. To the left you have your multitasking button and that will have all your different running applications in the card layout and you can also close or end them all at once. But that is pretty much it in terms of a quick look at the TouchWiz user interface. Moving on to the Nexus 5, of course it has the stock Android experience which a lot of people like because of its very smooth, snappy, and clean layout. And of course you also get your updates right after Google pushes them out on Nexus devices. Towards the left you do have Google Now and that will allow you to really quickly access your cards and other types of information. And you can see here that just scrolling through the menus it is just really smooth and fluid. There's just some options to edit your home screen whether it's adding any apps, widgets, or additional settings. One thing I noticed is that the icons are just so big making the screen feel like it's a little bit small actually. And there's just going through your app drawer and it's just really clean. There's no really additional options to it. It pretty much just puts it in alphabetical order. Sliding down on your notification tab, you can see that it is extremely clean and all you got to do is tap on the button on the top right corner and that will take you to your quick toggle settings, brightness settings, Wi-Fi, battery life, and stuff like that. And in your settings menu, it is a nice clean layout once again as we see throughout stock Android. The black and white look and really flat icons in that remark. But heading back to our home screen, of course the back button just works as a back button. The home button also allows you to access Google Now from anywhere and also your recent apps are also located there in a card layout and unfortunately you can't close these all at once. You pretty much just have to go through and close them one by one. But I guess it really isn't a big deal, it just would have been nice to be able to close all the applications at once. But in general that is just a really quick look at the clean and snappy stock Android experience on the Nexus 5. But I would have to say that you can't really straight out state one is better than the other. Some people obviously like TouchWiz because of its more, I'd say, sophisticated interface, while others may enjoy the clean and snappy stock Android experience. But I would have to say that TouchWiz is a little bit heavy for skin for my liking. And I kind of wish that Samsung would have taken the approach that HTC has and really lighten up in terms of its skin. When it comes to the camera, as you know on the Samsung, they have gone with the bigger the better theory in terms of the megapixels, while on the Nexus 5 being a mid-range priced phone, the camera is one of the categories you will definitely notice that. Since the device, as you know, does have top-end specs, however, it cannot be top-end at every category. But that's not to say that it's bad or anything. The S5 features a 16 megapixel camera which is able to capture some very clear and beautiful images. It also is able to record 4K video and also live HDR, while on the front you do have a 2 megapixel camera. For the Nexus 5 on the other hand, you've got an 8 megapixel camera that is able to record full HD video and on the front you have a 1.3 megapixel camera. And as you may know initially, there were quite a few complaints about the Nexus 5's camera, however in an update following the release of the phone, it definitely did make the pictures look overall much better in the processing. 
First, taking a look at the camera app on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you may remember from the S4 that it was a very feature-packed application, and it gave you tons and tons of different modes. Going into the settings, you got everything laid in a nice grid form, and everything is very easy to access, turn settings on or off, you have your video quality settings there, and in general, I think that they have done a good job with that, and personally, it makes it very easy for me to quick toggle some of these settings. You also have your options to turn HDR on and off, and also use a selective focusing mode which will allow you to play around with the focusing after you take the image. And on the bottom you've also got your toggle for the front and back facing camera. Another thing to mention is that Samsung claims the autofocus is between 0.1 and 0.3 seconds to take an image, so definitely focus very very fast. Moving on to the gallery, you're also given quite a few options in terms of tweaking your pictures after you take the actual image. And you go into the adjustments, you can crop, rotate, stuff like that. You can also change up the brightness, contrast, temperature, hue. Also have some pre-installed effects on there and the portrait such as red eye removal and also decoration where you can draw on your image, add frames and stuff like that. On the Nexus 5, however, you could see it is a very clean interface. In fact, the camera app was updated just yesterday, and by sliding to the right, you're revealed with all your different modes, such as lens blur, which is new, camera, video, and also the photosphere modes. And you're also given the detailed settings through the gear icon, and by tapping on the drop down, you're able to do some quick settings, such as switching between the front and back facing camera, HDR on off, the grid, and also your flash options. Swiping over to the right, you're taken directly to your gallery, and from there, you can see they have the frame options, also some different filters, crop, and also the option to change up the exposure and other settings like that, a lot of which we did see on the S5 as well. Now we're moving on to some real life photo and video tests. On the first shot, I would definitely say that the Samsung Galaxy S5 takes it hands down. It has a much brighter and seemingly more sharper image in general than the Nexus 5, which has a much darker color tone. That is also seen in the second image here, and again, I would say that the S5 is just slightly sharper, and that is to be expected with its 16 megapixel camera. Camera. The Nexus 5 once again having a darker image, which who knows some of you out there may prefer that actually. Moving on to our third shot, I would say that the picture was much closer this time. The S5 again has a brighter image, but the Nexus 5 you can see has a kind of redder tone to it. The images are a little bit more contrasted as you may tell. and. I would say that both of them did a pretty good job in this case. In this shot, however, I would say that the Nexus 5 did a little bit of a better job in handling the purple in the flowers, while the ne Samsung Galaxy S5 has a little bit of a brighter image. But in the very end, it really comes down to personal preference. On the front facing camera, you will notice that again, the Nexus 5 has a little bit of a darker tone with the 1.3 megapixel camera, and the S5 did a little bit of a better job handling the colors, and by the way, that is a two megapixel front facing camera. Moving on to the video test, you could tell that, of course, the Samsung Galaxy S5 once again does have a little bit of a brighter image, and I didn't touch the screen for any of the autofocusing. I want to see how well these two cameras can handle the close and far objects. And although I do know that the S5 is able to do 4K video as well, which is great, I decided to do this test in 1080p. You'll also tell that on the Nexus 5, like I mentioned in the previous shot, the pictures are just a little bit more contrasted while the overall brightness I would say on the S5 is definitely noticeable. But in the very end, as always, it comes down to personal preference and really which one in your mind you think is better. So when it comes to the camera, I would say that the Samsung Galaxy S5 definitely lived up with its 16 megapixel camera, and in most situations it did better than the Nexus 5. However, in some situations the Nexus 5 did seemingly handle it better than the S5. But I would have to say that the camera definitely goes to the Samsung Galaxy S5, though the Nexus 5 isn't bad by any means. Of course, the battery life is a very important part of every phone, and I'm glad to say that both these devices definitely excel in that category. The Samsung Galaxy S5 has a 2800mAh battery, while the Nexus 5 has a 2600mAh battery. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, the battery was able to last me at least a day and a half, and you also have the option to swap out the battery inside it if you ever need to, since as you know it does have the removable back and you can easily just switch them out if you happen to have a spare one. On the Nexus 5, I was also able to get through about a day and a half, and I definitely see that the battery or the standby battery on the Nexus 5 is really, really good. In fact, before the launch of the HTC One M8 and the Samsung Galaxy S5, for a smartphone at around 5 inches in its screen size, the battery on it was actually what I felt the best compared to the other Android phones I had at the time. 
So the last thing we're going to look at is the benchmark test and the reason why I left this to the end is it is pretty fair to say that a benchmark score really isn't going to reflect the differences in terms of real life performance of two devices. And from these tests you will come to expect that the S5 will come out with a better score with its Snapdragon 801 processor as opposed to the 800 and a clock speed of 2.5 versus 2.3. But I'll definitely assure you that no matter what these benchmark scores do, both these phones are extremely snappy and are able to really handle anything you throw at it. And as you can see from the benchmark score, the S5 came out with a score of 949 and 2925 in the multi-core score while the Nexus 5 came out with a score of 916 and 2743 multi-core. On the NT2 benchmark, we saw a much wider difference here with the S5 coming in at 36,099 and the Nexus 5 at 26,572. Moving on to the 3D Mark, which tests the GPU and graphics handling of these devices, the S5 came out with a score of 18,332 and the Nexus 5 at 13,373. But although there is quite a big gap in terms of that, it doesn't mean that the games are going to lag on the Nexus 5, as I have tried to play many games on it and it really handles it no problem. Next up, I tested these two devices in Quadrant Standard and the S5 came out with a score in the 23,000s while the Nexus 5 came out with a score of 7,183. And the last test we ran was a JavaScript benchmark on both these devices. I actually used the default Samsung browser and came out with a score of 420 milliseconds and the Nexus 5 came out with a score of 874 running Chrome. However, when I ran the same test on Chrome on the S5, it pretty much came out with the same score as the Nexus 5. But once again, I would like to say from using both these devices for web browsing, there really won't be a noticeable difference whatsoever. So now it really comes down to the final verdict. Now I'll say that both these devices are great performers. Let's just get that out of the way. And I also want to mention that for the price of the Nexus 5, it is definitely an amazing value considering it still has some of the top end specs like the Snapdragon 800 processor. And in general, the phone itself had a very solid feel and great performance throughout. On the other hand, the Samsung Galaxy S5 is a top end price smartphone with pretty much top end specs throughout the board. And I feel that the single biggest difference between both these devices is actually the software and what type of experience you are looking for and I definitely recommend you to try both of them out. Whether you want a busier, more feature packed interface on the S5 and TouchWiz or a clean and fresh stock Android experience. Other categories you may want to consider is the feel of the devices, the camera you may prefer and whether that is very important to you or the fact that you may want a fingerprint sensor in fact. Those are just some of the choices you're going to have to make as a buyer, but I will assure you that neither of these devices will disappoint. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.